so welcome. In this lecture, I want to look at the net change theorem, which is one of the things I talked about at the very beginning, uh, which was this fact that we, what in the integral allows us to do is to transform a, um, a rate of change into kind of a net change or, you know, a value of change. So let me show you, so let me kind of what I'm going to do is I'll just say what it is, which won't make that much sense, but I'll kind of give you two exam, um, you know, example settings or applications, and then kind of, um, it's a different kind of example, but just to give you a little bit of interpretation of what it means, and then you'll work through a number of examples in your homework. So here's the net change there. Um, and in fact, I think I just want to divide the board in three now, and I think that makes it easier. Oh, <laughs> that one got a little, a little weak. Okay, so here we go. Um, which is, it's just that the integral of the rate of change is equal to the net change. So, and the, I'll explain what I mean by that. Actually, I got a little carried away with this line. Now I want to get rid of it. That's why it's nice to have this nice uh, cloth here. Okay. Um, it's going to equal the net change. So let's look at some applications so that it's a little clearer. So the first one is going to be, so I'm going to have um, dn dt is going to equal the rate of the growth of the population. This is a very important thing that one might be studying right now because when we say population, we could also be the, the spread of the virus or something like this. Um, of growth of population. Okay, um, and then we have, so then the integral from T1 to T2 of dn dt is going to equal, so what, what's going to happen is I'm going to take, right, so I'm going to take that function. I'm going to subtract, I'm going to apply t2 and t1. Right, so this is really the fundamental theorem of calculus happening here, but you're seeing it now as kind of um, an actual application. I'm gonna get rid of that line too. I had wished in was it the pre one of the lectures I had wished I had made lines in the start, and so I thought I would do that this time to be proactive. And the problem with making lines in the stars, you don't know where you want them yet. Okay, so then this is gonna equal the net population change from this is gonna equal the net population change from time with whatever units we have. So we have, um, so from time equals T1. And I click that um, and just write time equals T1. Two time equals T2. And I mean to be writing two in there. Okay, uh, and then here's another example. So this is like one of these things that's like relevant in life right now. It's like the population of a disease uh, spreading or something like this. Um, but, uh, but there's also many other uh, examples this could show up. And in fact, the net change theorem works a lot also in physics and chemistry and so on. But I tried to find two examples that I thought would be, um, you would feel were the most relevant for the things that you're studying. Um, and then C of X, 
would equal the cost. So we're looking at a situation where this is the cost of producing X units of a co commodity. And then we have C prime of X. See, now I'm using the two different notations. So some students have actually been asking me about, I didn't realize that this notation wasn't used for you before. Um, and that would actually be, you do need to learn this notation because it's going to, if you have functions of multiple variables, which you are going to deal with later in this course, you need to use this notation to know what you're differentiating with respect to. All this means, you can think of it like N prime. But the point is, is that, this t is what's varying, so this n is a function of t, and t is what's varying, okay? But if n was a function of both x and t, then it would matter to me that t was what was varying, and that's why we use this notation of d dt or d dx or something like that. But if you only have one variable, you can just use the prime, and we all know what you mean. Uh, so we'll do that here. So now I'm going to take c and then prime of x. Is going to equal, so this is going to equal the marginal cost. Right, so then we're going to have, so then I'm going to have that the integral from, oops, it's, it's up there, so I can't see it unless I get up a little bit, um, x1 to x2 is going to, of c prime of, I have C uh, prime of x dx is going to equal. So what I want to do is, right, again, I want to put these into my, I want to put in these two times or values in here. So I want to put in x2, I want to put in x1, and I want to put a minus sign between them. Okay, so I'm looking at the change in the C, which is the cost. Okay. So this is going to equal the increase in cost when production increased from. So this is the increase in cost. When production increased, I'm just going to go all the way over here. When production increased from... And then I want to have these be x1 units to x2 units. So x1 units, x2, x2 units. Okay. So let's look at a little example. In some sense, these already are examples, but you don't have any kind of numbers in there or anything. Um, this is example credit... Credit Khan Academy. Okay. Um, so Sarah's revenue. If I didn't tell you that before, Khan Academy has a lot of examples and extra videos and so on if you ever want to see more. Um, the first time I taught, I went through, in addition to the book and other people's notes, I went through Khan Academy um, to borrow examples from them and see kind of different ways that things are explained and how I think it's going to make the most sense. Okay, so R of T is going to, so this is in thousands of dollars per month. So the revenue is R of T, thousand dollars So thousand dollars per month. And you're much better, I've found, that keeping track of units than me. I've been going into the feedback routes. Are there units? Yes, fair enough. Okay, um, where T is the month in the year. Okay. Um, so Sarah made... $3,000 in January. What is the meaning of $3,000? 
3 plus the integral. And we'll be a little consistent in our color coding here. 1 to 5 of R of T dt equals 19. Okay, so if that whole integral there equals 19. Okay, so the question is, what is the meaning of this? And the answer is, I'm going to pause a second because I'm going to put a question in this, this video. Okay, so the answer is by the end of the fifth month, Sarah made a total of $19,000. Okay. So why do we say this? So it's, it's even though we started at one, okay, the thing was is that we encapsulated what happened in the first year. So from zero to one, we encapsulated that in the three. Okay. Um, so if you added three to what happened between this, you know, at time one to time five, or time series and months, you're going to get 19. And this is also, I thought, I like this example also because it, it makes you kind of sort out what was really meant by the times in there um, and so on. I kind of like that example. Okay, so the net change theorem is a lot of why I find that it's very important to cover this um, because it's, it's a lot of why actually you care about integrals, right? Is because they're telling you um, how much have, things have changed. Why do we go through all this effort to learn about integrals? They tell you how things have changed. Okay, great. So I hope this makes some sense and I'll see you in the next lecture.